The Honourable Member for West Vancouver, Sunshine Coast, Sea to Sky Country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The environment is the economy. Nearly two years ago, on May 10, 2013, I stood in the House next to the Environment Minister to declare what British Columbians and Canadians believe, that the environment is the economy. Every time we consider whether environmental and economic factors are in balance, we're suggesting that the environment and the economy are in conflict with one another. Some would argue that we must sacrifice one to advance the other. In other words, we tend wrongly to start our discussion from the notion that the economy and the environment are at war with one another. As Member of Parliament, I'm increasingly required to consider the impact of industrial projects on the economy and environment, especially in the riding I represent. Throughout the year, conversations at events, coffee shops, and in the homes of constituents are often related to responsible resource development. Constituents of mine, as individuals and in groups, have consistently expressed their support for Canada's economic success, but have also stood for responsible environmental practices befitting of a riding which many call the most beautiful place on earth. Some of these proud Canadians include former fisheries minister John Fraser, Carl Halverson of the North Vancouver Outdoor School based in Squamish, Squamish First Nation elder Randall Lewis, and David Bromley, a world-renowned environmental engineer. The environment is the economy. This is a message we Canadians are increasingly taking to our Prime Minister, natural resources, industry, environment, fisheries, and other ministers. And Bill C-46, the Pipeline Safety Act, shows that our government is listening. Mr. Speaker, the environment is the economy. This is best illustrated in the context of value-added projects, both in the riding I represent and elsewhere in Canada. This government has created a challenging review process for natural resource projects where proponents have a high standard to meet. They must increasingly show better productivity and value to Canada with less waste, more efficient use of resources, and a respect for the environment we cherish. These projects have a significant impact on the quality of life in Canada, providing financial and infrastructure inputs. Canada needs these projects. The automatic reaction of stop is a simplistic approach characteristic of special interest groups that just want to stall projects. This Conservative government believes in the need for continuous improvement in project implementation and impact mitigation. However, we're opposed to the simplistic hands-down rejection of people who would just say no to industry, who forget Canada's entrepreneurial roots, and who would leap to negative conclusions without due process, sound data, or information to support their position. More and more, we Canadians are learning the benefits derived from a focus on the environment, specifically Less use of resource inputs such as water, energy, and land has made us more efficient, leading to higher productivity and economic sustainability. As a government, we have emphasized the need for a science-based, independent, objective approval process, which keeps us focused on the real objective of less impacts, greater efficiency, and sustainability. This government's focus on these principles has driven a culture of responsibility to improve continuously. The result? It's been the growth of jobs in the environmental sector, which now supports employment levels that dwarfs even the automotive and oil and gas sector. According to the organization Eco-Canada, as of 2013, some 682,000 jobs in Canada are directly related to the environment. The focus on the environment is a change agent, not a simplistic stop agent. It's why I continue to say that Canada's environment is our economy. Our government continues to rely upon independent, objective, scientific assessments before approving any project. We saw this approach at work recently in our government's rejection of the Taseco Prosperity Mine Project in northern BC, an ambitious proposal to create thousands of jobs and large economic stimulus, but nevertheless rejected for environmental reasons. Many British Columbians supported the Taseco initiative but environmental considerations prevailed. As demonstrated by that decision, our government has pledged that natural resource development will only proceed if the project is proven to be safe for Canadians and safe for the environment. The Pipeline Safety Act complements a number of previously implemented measures by our government to strengthen pipeline safety, 
which provided the National Energy Board, for example, the authority to levy administrative monetary penalties and increase the number of inspections and audits. Bill C-46 builds on this work and will provide a world-class regulatory regime for Canada's pipeline sector, while strengthening protection for Canadians and the environment. C-46 addresses three main areas, incident prevention, preparedness and response, and liability and compensation. Today, as a lawyer, it won't surprise you, Mr. Speaker, that I focus on the area of liability and compensation, and in particular, emphasize the bill's strengthened measures to compensate for environmental damages in keeping with the polluter pays principle. Under C-46, our government is delivering on the promise to enshrine the polluter pays principle in law to make it an important foundation for the pipeline safety regime. It places accountability on industry and protects Canadian taxpayers from having to pay for damages and cleanup costs in the unlikely event of a spill or accident. The polluter pays principle assigns responsibility to the polluter for paying for damage to the environment as well as the associated cleanup costs. One of the key features of the proposed law is that it will raise the cap for absolute civil liability, that is, even where there is no fault or negligence on the part of the proponent, a risen liability up to $1 billion for pipeline owners. On the other hand, liability where the pipeline owner is at fault or negligent will remain unlimited. Another key feature is that the legislation will establish the legal right for various parties to seek environmental damages. This will ensure that any damages to wildlife, waterways, or other public resources can be addressed. The absolute or no-fault liability regime created under Bill C-46 is one of the most robust and comprehensive in the world. While the U.S. and U.K. have similar legislation in place, the $1 billion financial capacity, a minimum financial capacity, and absolute liability limit are unique to Canada. Canada will also be unique in having a cost-recovered financial backstop model that provides complete coverage for cleanup and damages. Our country has a world-class pipeline safety system. Between 2000 and 2011, federally regulated pipelines boasted a safety record of over 99.999%. The natural resources sector is the largest private employer of Aboriginal people in Canada, Mr. Speaker. The plan described in the Pipeline Safety Act was developed closely with industry and Aboriginal communities to provide training for Aboriginal communities on pipeline monitoring and response. This will allow Aboriginal people to continue to make important contributions as full partners in the development of our natural resources. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, Canada's environment is the economy. This government supports robust processes that take into account all considerations relevant to British Columbians and Canadians, a sustainable environment, value-adding jobs, and thriving economic growth. Let's put an end to the stop mentality, a mentality that is characterized of not having sound data, and let's start encouraging open dialogue that considers all of the evidence, starting with this question of pipeline safety. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. J'aimerais remercier le collègue de, qui vient de faire un discours avec le très long nom de circonscription, mais très beau nom, un nom très évocateur. Alors, il a mentionné le... Euh, le, le pourcentage au niveau de la sécurité euh, des pipelines. Il faut comprendre, par contre, que les risques sont quand même là. Plus on va ajouter de pipelines, plus le volume va être, euh, va être élevé, euh, plus qu'il y aura des, des risques de déversement. Et notamment, ces risques-là, il ne faut pas, il ne faut pas les... Euh, les négliger parce qu'ils ont des risques également sur, euh, par exemple, euh, l'eau le, de consommation, etc., etc. Alors, euh, euh, j'aimerais ça qu'il élabore, euh, ben, qu'il élabore un peu plus sur euh, comment 
le gouvernement va utiliser, par exemple, la science et la technologie, euh, encourager euh, les projets novateurs en sciences et technologies afin, justement, que le Canada soit des leaders non seulement dans la sécurité, mais également de faire en sorte qu'on ait des lois robustes qui vont faire en sorte qu'on va tenir compte des risques associés au transport de, de ces marchandises. The Honourable Member for West Vancouver, Sunshine Coast, Sky Sky Country. Uh, Mr. President, je remercie bien uh, ma collègue pour sa question et uh, je suis très heureux de lui répondre parce que je pense que les conséquences de, uh, de élever uh, le, le, le safety dans le pipeline, c'est pas seulement uh, le, 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 le sauvetage élevé, mais c'est aussi pour encourager l'investissement dans un secteur qui est énorme pour l'économie canadienne. Par exemple, the oil sands alone support over 275,000 jobs across Canada. And according to Canadian Energy Pipeline Association, in 2013, pipeline companies invested six and a half million dollars in Aboriginal communities and paid 1.1 billion in property and corporate taxes. So I think that the Uh, the result, Mr. Speaker, is not only to increase safety, not only to build on world-class safety, not only to increase liabilities for polluters beyond anything known elsewhere in the world, but also to encourage investment <laughs> in a sector which is very much the engine for growth in Canada, which we must do with the best of environmental protections.